In this video, we're going to cover um, Boolean functions or start to cover Boolean function and applying some of the theorems and some of the principles uh, in Boolean algebra that we've learned uh, here. Let's go ahead and get started with one uh, thing. So let's go ahead and get the De Morgan's theorem and apply it to prove to ourselves that an AND gate can be replaced by a variation of NOR gate and vice versa. So let's remind ourselves what uh, De Morgan's theorem says. De Morgan's theorem basically says if you've got X and Y not, that can be replaced with X or X not or Y not, which is um, which is great. And of course, we also have its dual for De Morgan's theorem, which basically says if you've got X or Y and the whole thing is a knot, then you can replace that with x naught and y naught. Hopefully at this point you already can kind of see that um, it's really what it's doing. It's uh, replacing every and with an or, or vice versa, interchanging ands and ors, and interchanging uh, the, uh, um, the complements. So if it's non-complement, it becomes complemented and vice versa. So, so this is kind of a useful, useful thing to remember is that if I want to go between or and and, all I have to do is one, uh, I have to uh, complement all inputs and Okay, and remembering, remembering that if the output is already complemented, when you complement it again, it becomes uncomplemented. Um, and then the, the other uh, things you got to remember is that you have to swap or interchange uh, ands and ors. And then you got it. So well, what do I mean by that? Let's say, let's say I've got an AND gate, right? And this is an AND gate, which I've got an X coming in here, Y coming in here, and then I have a um, um, Z coming out here. I can literally, this is equivalent to me being able to replace it uh, to a And these bubbles means there is a not before. So, oops, oops, oops uh, this is going to be an or. So, better draw it as or. And not here. Just, just to prevent any confusion, these little circles are shorthand of showing this. So this is X, Y, and Z. So this is a shorthand drawing of the more explicit one, which is this. Regardless, though, um, this is saying Z is equal to X and Y. This is saying that Z naught is equal to X naught or Y naught. Now, we can apply the De Morgan's theorem to either side and get there. What I could do, could I could go over here and I can complement both sides of this thing. So if they are equal, their complement has to be equal as well. Then I can apply the De Morgan's theorem to this portion. And I've got, and this is the proof that both of these are the same. Okay, so that this is the same as this. Now, we can generalize, generalize this and go over here and literally remember some of the popular gates we had was Nelkan AND gate, NOR gate, AND gate, and OR gate, and notice what's happening here. You, know, you can have an AND gate, remember all the inputs and outputs will complement, so these inputs are non-complemented, become complemented, this one is complemented, so complemented again becomes uncomplemented. Oh, too many compliments. So, um, so um, then, then replace an N with an OR. 
So this is how you go between AND and OR. You can go back and forth if you like the same rule, the same two sets of rules that we specify somewhere up here. These two sets of rules can take you from AND to OR 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 to AND. Now let's go ahead and uh, see if we can apply this to an actual problem. Let's say uh, someone comes and gives you a um, circuit and the circuit is drawn as, as um, two variables coming in here. Oops, sure, we'll do both ends. Let's make this an end, something more interesting. So A2, A3, and let's say, let's say we take both of these together and we, oh, let's call it. And we come out with out one. And they're asking you, uh, can you redraw this, but only using OR forms. They want only OR forms. So you can't use any AND forms of any sort. When they say form, that means you can use NORs or any variation thereof. And, and you can use NOTs. NOTs are almost freebies in here, uh, using in, uh, inverters and NOT gates. So when somebody asks you to do only OR form, you can use basically NOT gate as well. That's what I'm saying. All right, so let's see how we could do that. Well, this AND, I want to make it an OR, so I draw it as an OR. Then I have to have everywhere that's not complemented, I got a complement. So there is my A0, A1 coming out, okay? And then uh, the next thing I got to do, I got to do for the second one. The second one, I'll take an AND and turn it into an OR, but here is already inverted, so I don't have to invert it. In I got two inversions here. So we got A2, A3, and then this one is already in OR form, so I don't have to do anything. And this comes out, oops, this is an OR. Got to work on my drawing. So that's the OR form of it, okay? So now, one of the things this leads to is what we what we call complete, um, complete um, so components. In other words, there are these certain components that you they're complete you can build everything else out of them and the simplest one there are many of them but the one that is most commonly taken is an AND gate so the assumption is not the assumption is the fact that an AND gate is a complete set meaning i can use this to build anything you give me any circuit i can use an AND gate to do that and that would be a challenge for you to go ahead and use only an AND gate to rebuild it. Can you do that? That's the only thing you have access to. Well, let, let's take a let's take a quick minute and see if we can really do that. Um, sh so yeah, if if I only if I can only use an AND gates to build this, then I could go over here. The first thing is I want to turn it into an AND form. The only thing I have to change to get it to an AND form is this piece, right? Um, so all I have to do is replace this piece with an AND. So I'll go to an AND form because then nothing is complemented. Complement everything. So that OR is equal to this AND form. Once I have this, then I got A0, A1. I'm going to run this to an AND gate. But I only have an AND, which means, but this one had an AND, so I have to do something with this negation. All I do, I use an AND gate to create a NOT gate. Here we go. If I connect both inputs together, this acts as a NOT gate. Done. A2 and A3 are pretty straightforward. They're already on an AND gate form. I'm done here. And then, and, uh, and then, uh, when I come over here, I look at, I have to um, run this through a negation. And the reason for that is because, um, because uh, this, this new form I replaced my OR with. Uh, actually, maybe I don't have to do that. Oh, um, because I have an AND here, I do not have a 
man i don't have a negation here i have to negate this first to count for this circle and then i run it through and end it and then this one has to go through another not gate and now this is i'm only using and and these two are equivalent to each other now some of you might at this point might see well this is kind of crazy why are you why are you sending it through one not gate to take care of this end and then you send it through a not gate to take care of this these two are canceling each other's effect sure that is true so all i have to do is get rid of them and connect this directly here simplify it a little bit and this happens when you do circuits once you've done the circuit then you start looking at it and wonder you know look for opportunities to optimize the thing so this was one complete uh, set the other complete set for example would be a nor gate uh, so an and and a not and nor and a not are complete sets now any variation you want to come out that has more those two in there will be complete set as well that basically means I don't care how fancy a computer you have or how much it can do or whatever it can be built as, as a matter of fact it's probably built out of billions or millions of either NAND gates or NOR gate because most manufacturers want to focus on one I one learn how to build one component and then use that component to build everything else in the this is called hierarchy design which you can move more um, use smaller component to build build a more complex one and then use the complex one to build an even more complex one okay before we go off uh, the functions uh, i wanted to take a few seconds and minutes or probably not second but minutes and kind of walk through a um, typical step of doing a truth table just for the completeness uh, at this point we have had some videos in the past that has done the truth table but we just want to make sure we at least have one video that explicitly take a look at that and answers that question so for example if you're if you're given a function um, boolean function and at this point uh, hopefully for the rest of these video in this grouping when I say a function, I'm referring to a Boolean function in the binary space. Okay, so let's say we have a function that kind of looks, let's say, something like this. Okay, and they're asking us to uh, go through this thing and do a truth table and a system diagram for it. Anytime, whether they're giving you a definition of what you need to design, or they're giving you a function, you always have to go, and the next step for sure should be to do a system diagram. System diagram, not to be confused with another diagram we call block diagram. System diagram is simply a box with whatever function you're performing, function name, I suppose, and inside this box is simply a box, and then all the inputs on this side. In this case, we have three inputs. So all the inputs on this side, and we put all the outputs on that side. In this particular case, we only have one F, so F is our output, and our input is um, X, Y, and Z, okay? So that's that. Uh, that's a, this, this is a system diagram, and it doesn't matter what you're doing anytime you are even considering analyzing designing a any kind of system the first thing you have to do is a system diagram if your design doesn't have a system diagram it is an incomplete design okay the next step for these particular uh, designs here with uh, we use a truth table and a truth table is basically a way for us to capture all the possible inputs and all the possible outputs associated with those inputs. And we use, we use this T um, structure. On one side, we put the inputs, and the other side, we put the output. And so X, Y, and Z, and this side is our function F of X, Y, and Z. Then what we'll do is we'll do a binary 
um, um, count up from 0, 0, 0 to the maximum. Now we know that we have three bits, so if we have three bits, you will have eight rows. So in other words, if I have n bit, n, n inputs, I have three inputs, if you have n inputs, then you will have two to the n rows in your truth table. And it's really important to do the input first and be very sequential, so go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the reason we want to do that, we want to make sure that we are not missing a possibility, one of the options when we are doing this, okay? And then the next thing simply is that, let's plug this back into this equation. We're gonna take zeros and plug them in here. That tells us this is a zero. Then we're gonna take uh, zero, zero, one, plug it in there, that's a zero. Then we're gonna take zero, one, uh, zero in there, that's a one. And then this is a one, um, and on and on, okay? Um, let's see, um, well, let me finish this. Zero, zero, one, one. So this, this was a quick um, review of if someone gives you a function and they want a true table, how you do that. It, and it's also, it could be function is basically a description of what this function does. It could also be verbalized you know, as to what needs to happen. Then you can, you can actually reverse the direction. You can do the true table first and work your way back up. But regardless of what happens, regardless of what happens, system diagram has to be included in this.